Republicans in Arizona are pushing forward with an insane so-called audit of that state's election results with plans to pursue similar audits in other states that Joe Biden won. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Nearly seven months after the 2020 election, Republicans are still relitigating the results in a pathetic and dangerous attempt to prove that it was somehow stolen from Donald Trump. It feels like this con is never going to end. 40 years from now, I'm still going to be at this desk with a long gray hair and a scraggly beard talking about the GOP's latest attempts to overturn the 2020 results in Arizona. And if I'm still here, you better believe Wally's going to be here too. He'll be old enough at that point that he won't be able to hold more than one card at a time, so we'll have to write super duper small. <laughs> but then because it's super small, I won't be able to read it, so I'll need those giant old man glasses with a chain around my neck. But then the light reflecting off my glasses will blind Wally, so he'll have to wear those square black glasses that people with cataracts wear. Point is, it's a vicious circle, and it needs to stop. Earlier this week, for example, Mike Lindell, the guy who thinks China and a voting machine company teamed up to steal the election and who sells pillows, I assume, filled with gravel and nightmares, got thrown out of a meeting of the Republican Governors Association after promising to confront governors about non-existent fraud. According to Politico, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, was banned from a Republican governor's conference in Tennessee. It comes after Lindell went on Steve Bannon's radio show promising to confront Republican governors Brian Kemp and Doug Ducey about unfounded election fraud claims in Georgia and Arizona. I'm sure it's not the first venue Lindell's been thrown out of. He's got resting thrown out face. As a baby, his first words were, but my friends are in there. <laughs> Bars, libraries, children's birthday parties. I mean, really, any place where you have to keep your voice down is a no-go for him. Can you imagine Lindell as a golf announcer? Kepka with the approach. Here at 17, he's got to avoid that front bunker. Yeah, you gotta stay out of that or a birdie's gonna be impossible. Okay, now he's stepping away from the ball and he's looking over here for some reason. Oh, he looks real mad and oh God, here he comes. Run everybody! The problem for Republicans is they keep running up against reality. They lost somewhere around 60 court cases, including in front of Trump appointed judges who quite literally said they had zero evidence to support their claims. And that's not exaggeration. Judge appointed by Trump actually wrote in one of his rulings, calling an election unfair does not make it so. Charges require specific allegations and then proof we have neither here. That sounds like a note your high school English teacher would write on a paper while you argue that Hercule Poirot was the real killer on the Orient Express. And of course, there were multiple recounts and audits that kept confirming the same results over and over. In Georgia, they counted the votes three times and declared Biden the winner three times which gave Biden an opportunity to try out a new laugh line at a rally in Atlanta. Thank you for standing strong to make sure your voices were heard, your votes were counted, and counted, and counted again. I'm starting to feel like I won Georgia three times. One thing I will kind of missed about COVID-era politics is all the drive-in rallies. It sounds like Biden was giving a pep talk to Lightning McQueen and the gang, and yet, Republicans cannot let go. They're trying to launch baseless audits and investigations around the country. And as we speak, they're continuing their insane audit in Arizona where they've hired a firm that has zero background or expertise in elections. The privatized Republican recount of the 2020 presidential election results in Arizona's most populous county, Maricopa County, is now entering its second week. Here's what it looks like from inside the lovely Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix where this sort of dangerous and farcical enterprise is being undertaken by the Republican-controlled Arizona State Senate, who used their power to subpoena more than two million ballots just from this county, just from a Democratic county. And then they handed them over to a private security firm called Cyber Ninjas that has no experience in elections and whose CEO, through his now deleted Twitter account, extensively retweeted lies about Joe Biden stealing the election. That's their name, the Cyber Ninjas? That sounds like the name of a bowling team at a child's birthday party. If you just told me the name without any context, I'd guess Cyber Ninjas was some sort of hot new toy you have to feed so we can grow strong and conquer the cyber dojo. And then I'd be bummed because my wife would tell me to go out and get one for the boys so I could go to Kmart and there'd be one Cyber Ninja left on the shelf and I'd have to wrestle it away from some old lady whose hands are weirdly strong from knitting, I guess. So then I'd have to push her down and run away with it. But she catches up to me because somehow her power walking is faster than my full-on sprinting. And then someone would snap a photo and there'd be a headline on TMZ that says Seth Meyers roughed up by an old lady found crying in Kmart parking lot. 
The point is, this so-called election audit is obviously a scam. We already told you about how they were using 5K cameras to search for traces of bamboo on ballots to find out if they were smuggled in from Asia. They were also using ultraviolet lights to find ballots they claim had been watermarked by Trump. They've engaged in some rather suspect auditing methods, like using UV lights to scan ballots for fraud because there is a utterly insane conspiracy theory that Donald Trump watermarked the real ballots. Not only is that not true, there are no watermarks, but experts say the UV lights could actually damage the ballots. That's right, they think Trump watermarked the real ballots. Ah yes, Donald Trump, master forger. I don't think he's capable of that level of subtlety. His golf pencil is probably a Sharpie. I guarantee you, Trump has no idea how to watermark. Now I'm confident he knows how to Diet Coke mark a desk. When Biden got into the Oval Office, I bet they had to scrub it down with industrial strength linseed. And on top of that, the UV light could actually damage the ballots, you know, in the name of election integrity. What other genius ideas do they have? Only the real ballots will float, so let's throw them in the river if they sink it's fraud. I mean, what's next? They feed the real ballots to a bunch of chickens and then incinerate the chickens? Oh, oh, that is next? Wow, I'm getting good at this. Because for real, there are allegations, which I honestly don't fully understand, that some of the ballots were, I guess, eaten by chickens and then incinerated. I don't know, guys, let's just Watch the clip and find out together. A grift disguised as an audit. That is the state of the absurdest theater in Arizona this morning. Accusations of ballots flown in from South Korea. Allegations that chickens ate some of the ballots and then the chickens were incinerated. And you listed some of the things, whether it be checking for bamboo using the ultraviolet light, but there's other things on this list. Accusations that ballots flown in from South Korea. Allegations literally, that chickens ate some of the ballots and then the chickens were incinerated, I guess. What are some of the other crazy things that are being thrown out? Yeah, I mean, that, that chickens one is probably pretty top, top uh, of the charts. Jesus, hearing news about this audit is like listening to Werner Herzog tell you about a dream he had. The chickens ate the ballots and then the chickens were incinerated, reduced to dust like so much refuse, nature taking its toll, the chickens gasping in their dying moments, cock-a-doodle-doo, <laughs> cock-a-doodle-doo. So just to recap, in case you're watching this and your brain is normal and you're therefore having trouble falling, they think there's bamboo in the paper because it was smuggled in from Asia. They think Trump watermarked the real ballots. They think Hugo Chavez, who died in 2013, rigged the election, and they think the ballots were eaten by chickens who were then incinerated. This audit is crazier than one of those viral cooking videos where someone grinds up a hamburger and turns it into a milkshake. And it will not surprise you to learn that the people who commissioned this audit are, of course, uh, lunatics. And I'm not just talking about fringe weirdos like Lindell. I mean, the president of the Arizona State Senate, who was tracked down by CNN this week and gave an absolutely bonkers interview where she defended the audit. Aren't you raising more questions by giving rise to these conspiracy theories? No. I'm answering questions. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Are you 100% confident that every vote that came in in Arizona or any other state, are you, can you say emphatically 100% that no uh, dead people voted, that ballots weren't filled out by other people, that the chain of custody from the minute people uh, voted their ballots, that the chain of custody was accurate and, and on target the entire time? Can you tell me that? From day one, the entire process has been live streaming. So anybody on OAN with cameras controlled by OAN. Are you saying that OAN is not a credible uh, news news source? Are you yes. saying that? Okay, I'll remember that. CNN is saying that OAN is not a credible one. Yes. Okay. Lady, OAN doesn't even think OAN is a credible news source. Their slogan is "Okay, hear me out." <laughs> a couple things here. One, anyone can just throw out a bunch of insane conspiracy theories and demand proof that they didn't happen. That's not a gotcha. When you make an allegation, you're supposed to provide the proof. Like if someone comes up to you on the subway and says, can you say emphatically 100% that the CIA is not using psychotropic drugs to teach rats how to steal pizza from humans, you wouldn't be like, well, you got me, dude. I guess we better investigate. Honey, I'm gonna be late. I'm starting a subway detective agency with the man I just met. Also, I did not get the cyber ninja. 
Also, are you just finding out now that OAN is not a credible news outlet? This is a network that recently ran the Chiron Biden hiding in basement as millions of people freeze in Texas. And look, criticize Biden all you want, but he's not hiding in a basement. If anything, he exerts himself too much. He jogs, rides a bike, lifts weights. The other day, he floored it in an electric F-150 like a grandpa who just found out there's a sale at Lowe's. Hot <laughs> We're getting some flagstones today, baby! But that interview is a good reminder that in addition to being craven and delusional, many of the elected Republican lawmakers in Congress and in state legislatures who make up the core of the Trump cult are also just super dumb. Like, take Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert. Side note here, I almost feel bad just saying his name because it does sound like an anti-Texan slur. Look at this freaking Gohmert and his American flag Crocs. Gohmert, and again, sorry, who has been one of the most vocal advocates of the big lie that the election was stolen, has also lied about the January 6th insurrection. Last year, he called for a, quote, revolution to overturn the election. And then earlier this month, he lied and said that the actual violent insurrection that occurred at the Capitol was actually not an armed insurrection. There's no evidence, as has been said on January 7th, that this was an armed insurrection. There have been things worse than people without any firearms coming into a building. All right, first, that's not true. Weapons were used during the riot, recovered by authorities. Second, saying there are worse things than the thing that happened doesn't make the thing that happened a good thing. He sounds like a kid explaining a party that got out of hand when his parents were out of town. Look, some people came over unarmed. Someone took a in the hot tub, Tyler. Worst things have happened, Mom. Anyway, the point is, these guys are dumb or deluded or both. But many of them are also the core of the Trump cult and the leaders of the next wave of Trumpism in the GOP, like Matt Gates or Marjorie Taylor Greene. And believe me, I don't want to spend any more time talking about her, but she and Matt Gates have been going around the country in a so-called America First tour, proudly championing Trumpism and the big lie that the election was stolen from him. Trump himself has repeatedly praised her, despite the fact that she has repeatedly defended her comparison of mask mandates to the Holocaust and once claimed wildfires are caused by secret Jewish space lasers. Normally. When you hear that kind of talk, you're at a local community board meeting where everyone gets five minutes to raise an issue. Yeah, um, I just want to say I think we need another Metro card machine at the 7th Avenue station, and also I think we should do something about the secret Jewish space laser. Uh, I'd like to real, uh, excuse me, I'd like to yield the rest of my time to the cigarette-smoking cockroach. Can you believe this Mets team? <laughs> What's with all the injuries? No, oh, what? No smoking indoors? Since when, 2003? Well, if it's been that long, someone should tell the cicadas. Did someone say my name? <laughs> it's wonderful to be back. After 17 years underground, I can't wait for 17 great years above ground in the best city in the world. Oh, no. Oh, I have some bad news, cicadas. I hope it's not bad news about my life expectancy. <laughs> anyway. The new insane thing from Green that came out this week is an unearthed clip in which she argues, as a candidate for Congress, that she would be against taking down hypothetical statues of Hitler and Satan so that we can use those statues to teach children who they were. We're seeing situations where Christopher Columbus, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, all kinds of statues are being attacked, and it seems to be just a, an effort to take down history and whether I see a statue that may be something that I would fully disagree with, like Adolf Hitler, maybe a statue of Satan himself, I would not want to say take it down. But again, it's so that I could tell my children and teach others about who these people are, what they did, and, and what they may be about. No, oh, yes, who can forget their eighth grade field trip where we all piled into the school bus with our teachers, drove down to the town square, and gazed upon the statues of Satan and Hitler, only to realize then, after seeing them in statue form, I think these are bad guys. Also, as far as I'm aware, there are no statues of Satan or Hitler. So does that mean Green doesn't know who they were or why they were bad? Because according to her logic, in order to learn who someone was, you need a statue of them. When she watches a movie about World War II, is she confused? Is this guy with the tiny mustache the bad guy? And why is he so angry? I need a statue to explain this to me. These are the people engaged in a nutty and dangerous attempt to undermine the results of the 2020 election through scam audits and investigations, even though recounts and court cases have repeatedly proven there was no widespread fraud. They just want to double down on Trump's big lies so they can steal elections in the future. It's dangerous. 
It's insane. The only possible upside here is that a few Republicans might become vegetarians after they hear that. Chickens ate some of the ballots. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.